Oh, all right, here we go. There is, he is in his underground bunker with all the watches. In the grow room. John Buckley. Hello, thanks for calling in. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you too. You almost called me Jeff. <laughs> I did not. Don't say you that. Almost, sure? I didn't. Nope. I refuse okay. that. Where are uh, you right now? What's that? Where are you, you right? <laughs> no, but you're, it seems like you're, you know, is, was there a nuclear bomb drop or something that I missed? Not yet. Not we yet. We have to do things like uh, the humidity has to be a certain level so that things don't, uh, you know, rot. <laughs> so that the radium doesn't kill us faster than it normally does. So let's see. Oh, is that a weed growing room? Somebody said, are you also doing that? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped smoking weed about 30 years ago. Well, Unfortunately. You, you've, um, you've built such an interesting kind of profile for yourself online on TikTok, yeah. And I've become a fan of yours. I love watching your videos. Great. And, um, I find it so interesting. How do you, how is it that you, uh, like, what, what is your business? Because I notice sometimes you go and you're looking for a specific watch. Yeah. Do you have clients who are like, I want this watch, go find it? Or how does that work? Well, I deal with probably, I, I usually say there's a dozen people that I deal with, like, on a daily basis. And a lot of times I've got guys that I've known for the better part of 20 years that call me up and they're like, okay, Buckley, I need uh, this watch. I need a Paddock 30. 3970 or i need a you know a gold daytona or i need a you know an ap or this this and that and most of these people i have you know a very very long standing relationship so they'll either you know wire me up front or i'll lay out money for them and then they'll wire me when they hit town you know usually they hit town within a couple of days cuz these things are usually kind of bad. but sometimes you know they'll come in a week later or something like that but uh, I'm usually filling orders for people. Sometimes I'll stock stuff. I mean, I stocked, um, there was a video, oh, wow, a couple of months ago. You may remember it. If, if you're one of these guys that likes to watch the videos, I kind of like to watch them too. They're kind of interesting. Like just from, you know, from my perspective, I like to watch them and kind of see what I'm doing wrong and doing right. But we do everything live and I never edit. I never cut. I always do things in one take. And we did a, um, a watch that I bought, actually, that I still have. I don't have it here. I've got it locked up in the city. But um, the Hans Wilsdorf, um, the, own, the founder of Rolex, this watch to somebody, you know, like 60 years, 70 years ago or something like that. And I've been trying to buy it for like 10 years off the um, owner. And then the owner, God you know, rest in peace, he passed away. And I wound up buying it from the estate. And that was uh. the video. So you um, waited for this. So this dude had to die before you would before you could get the watch. <laughs> now, now let me ask you this, John. Did the police have any questions for you, knowing you had a motive? You know something. <laughs> I had a really good alibi. I'm from Brooklyn, so I think ahead. Okay. I, yeah. I was sick. There okay. Was no good. Problem. You got receipts from. Yeah. Good. Um, uh huh. <laughs> got you know like an easy pass uh, tickets and things like that. <laughs> of, so uh, wait, yeah. I, so I how much was that watch? I wound up paying 125 for it. 125 grand. Yeah. And uh, I've been trying to buy it since it was like 50 or 60. That's, you know, th that's how these things work. Sometimes, you know, you really have to be, <sighs> I'm not that much of a collector. Okay. I, I am kind of, I'm what I like to consider a professional collector. I mean, I buy and sell for money. Okay. I, the passion has kind of left left me years ago for this stuff. And a lot of people don't understand that. You know, they, they wonder why it is that I'll wear an Apple watch and, you know, I'm going out there buying all of these crazy watches. And it's just, you know, I, I remember years ago when, and sometimes guys don't understand when I say that it used to be really special to be involved in, you know, horology or vintage watches, especially that's my, that's my area of expertise. And there were maybe, you know, a hundred or 200 of us, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s that used to do this. And, you know, now it's like every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, dealer on 47th Street fancies themselves a vintage guy. And, you know, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Why? Because they, they, you think that they don't have the credentials. Oh, they don't. Yeah. That's, I have the credentials. Yeah. I mean, listen, 
it's like classic cars, you know, and I'm not a car guy, but I know there are guys that, you know, can look at a car from a mile away, you know, and they'll know that that's the original bumper. Those are the original tires. Like I'm the same way when it comes to this stuff. So wait, how is it that you make money? You buy just to resell at a markup or? I do that stuff more as a courtesy to my, my longstanding customers. I'm mm -hmm. a parts, I, I deal in parts. I deal in investment grade watches and investment grade parts. Like mm -hmm. some of those watches, I mean, most of the watches that I buy and sell on TikTok are, you know, for the most part, they're modern watches. But when you get into like the older vintage stuff from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, there are very specific parts that go with them. And I'm an expert at identifying those parts in like, you know, a bag of other parts. And mm -hmm. I'll know there's one part that I can use that I could sell to my customer in Singapore who's, you know, waiting to put together this watch that's going to be worth, you know, mid six figure watch and wow. all I have to tell them this one little part that I'll get, I don't know, 50 or 60 grand for, and I'll be happy to Damn, get it. Damn, that's crazy. So you have the really interesting specialty uh, skill. Yeah. So what's the most you've paid for a watch? Oh man, I, I've, I've partnered on seven figure watches. I've bought six figure watches. I mean, I buy them six figure watches regularly on TikTok. But and is that, is that for you to, how many of those do you keep? Do you do you keep the them or you you sell them? I still have the the one from the estate. I, I have that one. I wanted that one. You know, most of the time I'm just filling an order for somebody, and I you know I do it because a I make money, b I'm already there. It's really not a lot of work. Mm. You know, it's just you know, writing a check or sending a wire. And people, I, I don't know what it is about the younger generation. I'm 59. I just turned 59 last week. And people are like, how are you still writing checks? And what guys don't understand is, you know, to send a bank, well, you can't do a Zelle or a credit card. Nobody, you know, in my business, we're wholesalers. Nobody does that. You have to either send a wire or write a check. And if you send a wire, a wire costs you $30 in, $30 out. So if I do that 10 times a week times four, I mean, you know, it comes out to a you know, substantial amount of money every month. Mm. So that's check and the people that we work with i mean we have relationships with them I, I mean you know you see some of the guys little eddie and albert yasha um leah i mean color couture and leah and bobby is <laughs> i mean those are friends for you know over 20 years does anyone and, ever uh stiff you you say is it like people I, you buy it for them so you put out money is anyone ever stiff you Every once in a while, I just, I got burnt, not burnt. I mean, look, you know, I, I tell people this and they look at me like I'm crazy. I lose money on probably between five and 10% of everything that I buy. Now I'm speaking about parts and stuff like that, but if, like a month and a half ago, I had a customer that, you know, called me up, wanted a, um, a green dial Daytona. It was like, I forget what I, I think I paid 82,000 for it. He was supposed to give me 83. He was flying in the next day. Guy just ghosted me after that. I wound up selling the watch back to who I bought it off. I've lost about six or $7,000 on the deal in a couple of days. I was, but this is the business, you know, there are other days that I make that, you know, three, four, five times over. So, mm -hmm. you know, you cry over it if you're a dealer. You know, I mean, I'm a veteran dealer, so this stuff happens. I mean, you lose money sometimes, just the way it is. But we make more than we lose. Yeah. Zach, you got any questions? Our, our, show him your watch, Zach. Let's see. Let's get a read on. It's a uh, black date sub. Uh, I think the reference number is 116610LN is the model number. Is that helpful that's to you, a model number? Yeah, that's the model number. Okay. That's good. Okay. I, beautiful you, watch. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful watch. I mean, the classic Rolex. I mean, you know, there Rolex. There it is. Yeah. That, <laughs> John real. Buckley. I love the yeah. video of the one. Uh, it was for the Secret Service, I believe, that, that black oh. sub. Oh, you don't know the story behind that. Oh, there's a story behind it. Go go look for the video now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be, I, I, I'm not a watch guy, but I'd be afraid of getting mugged on the street with a watch like that expensive. You know, does that happen? Not, not to us, maybe other people it does. Cause uh, you know what? We are very careful. I grew up in the city. I grew up in New York in the seventies. So, you know, I'm no babe in the woods. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, we are, you know, well protected and we have security that's uh. either lurk or, you know, around on the block. 
we're, we're safe. Other guys, you know, that's why we don't go around and we don't flash and we don't take things off the street. Really, I mean, have, we have a vault on the street. We get to the street. We get our stuff. We run around 47th Street and the street is very safe. OK. And we still, you know, I mean, obviously we carry protection, but I mean, you know, we carry sometimes we have somebody with us. Sometimes we have people in the building that are looking out. Mm. But ever, you know, we, we don't take stuff. I mean, I'll ship stuff many times to the office in New Jersey. You know, I'm not going to carry it, you know, across in a car, you know, where, you know, God forbid you get into a car accident or something like that. You lose, you know, two hundred thousand right. dollars. We're just, you know. Uh, we're veterans, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I know all the pitfalls. I've seen guys, you know, get hurt out there and killed. Really? You know, Ag, yeah. Like getting mugged? Um, like killed how? Oh, I have a friend that, um, he was leaving a trade show and he was on the, um, Garden State Parkway in a taxi cab and one of the car, and car pushed him off the road in the taxi cab. Whoa. Jumped, shot him through the face and stole his bag. He's Whoa. alive. I mean, the guy's alive. He he lived. I mean, they weren't. How much did he lose? A couple hundred thousand. Damn. You know, you know yeah, briefcase. You gotta, that's crazy. Here's the problem. It's like if I'm doing a trade show, I'm shipping, you know, armored car <laughs> to and from, from a secure location to a secure location from mm -hmm. 47th to the trade show, you know, where there's a safe room with, you know, armed guards all over the place. Do the show and then you ship it back. You don't carry your stuff out of a show. It's just not what you do. Right. You know, you know what? They don't want to spend the extra thousand, fifteen hundred each way to do that. I mean, we, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't play like that. You know, I have there my son, it is. Business, you know, I have Tyler with us, you know, and it's like, we, you know, we're careful, you know, I can't take chances like that. Do you recommend Zach uh, be strapped? He's wearing a classic Rolex. <laughs> he walks around LA city with that on that got that display of wealth do you think he needs some protection it's not a question of needing some protection it's a question of being really careful when you're at a restaurant and you have a couple of drinks in you oh yeah if you look on tiktok i think the tiktok page i <laughs> stolen watches or something like that and you'll see all the i mean i get these videos before they go online because customers will send them to me and say hey i'm not wearing my uh you know my paddock 5980 or something like that you know, and I'd be like, yeah, good. You shouldn't be wearing that, you know, walking around Barcelona or, you know, walking through the streets of London. London is really bad lately. I mean, so, Zach, are you looking over your shoulder now that you're kind of a Rolex guy? Has How's that changed your perspective on, on the street? I won't wear it everywhere. <laughs> okay. Where won't you wear it? Um, usually if it's like I'm going to hang out with friends or something and we, we know we're going out to dinner, I... I probably won't wear it then i just i wear it in places i know that are comfortable the john buckley experience zach he's already a veteran he's learned <laughs> already he looks yeah. like he's, he's smart yeah. you know be careful listen it's a new world there were times uh, listen i have stories you know i i've walked through you know the the streets of milan alone wearing you know expensive watches and you know i, I like to collect world series rings and, you know, I'd be walking around with Yankees World Series ring and a Rolex Daytona on my on my you left. You wear team. a World Series ring? You can't. Oh, that's you're, I don't think you're allowed to do that, John. I collect it. I'm a, I love you that wear stuff. it? Oh, yeah. I, People mistake for, like, baseball players. Dude, what? That's you ever crazy. pretend you were a Yankee? Yeah, you ever... Does it ever <laughs> work for you at the bar? <laughs> Oh, wait. I was in Mastro's about in Vegas. About. That's a bit of stolen <laughs> valor there, John, I have to say. You're familiar <laughs> with that concept? Listen, I'm in Mastro's. I got a Lakers championship ring on each hand. What? Why? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Why? My championship rings. So I'm sitting in Mastro's, and there's this couple sitting next to me, and they were looking at me. You know, It was an, elder, <laughs> an older black couple, and they're looking at me. And I'm sitting there and I'm eating my whatever I was eating. And I was with one of my guys. And I get up and the lady, she was very sweet. She's like, excuse me, sir. What is the significance of those rings? So I'm like, oh, these are from the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, you know, 2010 and 2011. Or I forget the years that they were. And I'm like, oh, are you on the team? I was like, yes, I was. She was like, oh, what was you doing? Magic Johnson. She was like, oh, what a pleasure to meet you. I was like, oh, Wait, how, how tall are you, John? I can't tell with you sitting. What's, what's that? I'm not that tall. Not I'm that like, tall. Yeah. 
I'm not calling up for the NBA. Dude, I got to say, that's kind of wild to walk around in those rings. Like that's oh, like wearing that's like wearing a high school graduation ring from a different high school Harvard. Never a grad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny yeah. though. That's funny. Business and I get all of this stuff. I mean, people know that I collect this stuff. I mean, I've got NYU rings. I mean, I don't wear that stuff. I don't care about NYU, but I mean, I'll wear a Yankees ring. I mean, I'll I'll be in Newark Airport and somebody will walk up to me like, oh wow, can I take a picture with you? Who are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Joe Torre. They're like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so how much does a, does a championship ring cost? They, they could they range i mean from a, a staff a, a top level staff ring which is the same ring that a player would get like a front office a real front office guy probably 30 grand and Damn. to a player i mean you can go i mean hundreds of thousands do you know that. who do you know whose rings they were and what had a had a, t- a high level staff ring and oh, okay, it was okay okay i think uh, i have it upstairs and um, it, it's just one of those things where I just, I, and I really like it. I mean, when I stopped, when I kind of like stopped with the watches, like being really passionate about them. I mean, look, I was one of these guys that I would go on vacation. I mean, I have pictures in Jamaica at Dunn's River Falls wearing, you know, a, a friggin' diamond GMT. And I'm like walking around like this. He's <laughs> mm-hmm. running up to me, like trying to sell me uh, aloe and uh, beads and stuff like that. And I was like, man, nah, that's not a good idea. No. You know? But uh, the World Series rings are fun. So let me ask you this. How much is your whole collection worth? Are you comfortable saying? I don't have, <laughs> like, much of a collection. I mean, my ring collection? I don't know, six figures at least. I mean, my watch collection? I don't really have that many watches that I collect, per se. I've got first Rolex I ever owned. I have maybe, like, three or four other watches that, are, you know, that I really like. But, I mean, I'm not really, like, you know, it's, it's just, collected them over the years but my first rolex i still have my son who, who shoots the videos he wears it all the time and oh, I, I'm like your son that's nice do you have any ice yeah. out there that you could bust out for us i want to see john all like pimped out oh uh, i don't have any ice here i had a university of north carolina like <laughs> that i was wearing in a video the other day see me I'm, I'm one of these guys i like this kind of stuff this is like i'm in the lab now so this is the kind of stuff i like like Oh, wow. What all do you think? Dials. Oh, those are all dials. Okay. What's, what's each one of those run if you were to sell it? I mean, I don't know. Like if somebody offered me, you know, hundred grand for the tray, I'd say no. Wow. You know? Damn. <laughs> and it, it, it's the, that's the kind of stuff that moves me. You know, I want, I, John, I want something like this. Can we set this up? I don't know if maybe next time I call or something. <laughs> Can you see this photo? He, he's seeing it. Uh, I can't. I've got fuck. Can you? My son's over there being yeah. producer. He's uh, yeah, he's, he's holding pictures of like. What does he have? Oh, wait, he's gonna show me on his phone. <laughs> wait, let's... oh wait, he's refreshing. Hold on. Oh my god. Yeah. Hold it's on. It's a picture of you with like championship rings, with like like photoshopped on your head. Oh, like, oh my like god, this. I like this. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Maybe uh, next time there. But if, uh, if, but I there it is. Where? Let me see. Wait. No, I'm oh, you can't see it. You can't see it. We're we're having production. I mean, uh, technical difficulties over here. You know, I I personally, the watch thing. It's like like you guys say, you have to be so scared or apprehensive going everywhere. It seems like more of a pain, but I guess you got to flash it, right, Zach? You got to let the people know. Well, that's not what it's about for me. I think what about is the history and the craftsmanship mm-hmm. of it. More than a, a flash piece, I guess, if you will. So is Zach like a new watch lover? Is he a horology guy? Now? <laughs> what do you want? Prove your, uh, Zach. Yeah, what's your credentials yourself? here, Zach? I mean, I, my, 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 <laughs> my uh, I've been obsessed with watches probably since I was, I don't know, 16. And my dad had Rolexes and, um, you know, I'd love a, the next watch is a Panda, you know, or a, um, yeah. Or uh, you know the I, I, Daytona's are coming down in price, so I'd really it, yeah. There, you know, it's it's weird. I've been through many a market crash over the years since the '90s, and you know, it, it boggles the mind that folks look at an up market like we've had in the last two years and think it's never going to end. And the funny thing is, like we as dealers, like a lot of dealers. I mean, we make a lot of money, you know, as the market's going up. And, you know, it, people are not fair with others. You know, I always get the call from somebody who bought something 
from another dealer and they're like, Oh, you know, I need to sell this. I just paid like 50 grand for it. I'm like, well, you know, I could sell it to you for 30 now, you know, what would you like me to do? You know? And I'd be like, well, why don't you go back and talk to the person who sold it to you? And they're always like, Oh, well, you know, I'm buying right now. I'm like, yeah, well, that's, that's really not cool. You know, let me it's ask just, you, uh, let me ask you something. Are you yeah. familiar with Dave Portnoy? You know who that is? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Another New Yorker, right? He made this, he made this watch company called brick watch company. Have you seen this? Yeah. Would you like my take on it? I would absolutely love your honest opinion on this and they're not cheap, right? I mean, they're pretty like this one right here is 2,500 bucks. So that's a, that, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Please tell me everything. Nothing but respect for Dave Portnoy. He's oh. actually, He's friends with. Uh, I don't think that's his. He's 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 buttering us up. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be really blunt, okay? I know he's a really good guy. He looks out. I have a friend down here who owns a pizza store, uh, Brooklyn Square. We don't okay. even we don't even like him here, so you don't have to worry about like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to worry. These about, are like, these are direct yeah, competition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, one thing that I could say about whoever was spearheading that, they were not watch people because <laughs> what they they tried to push a fashion watch into like a mid-level watch market with no branding and no real provenance. The problem with that watch was that it's 2,500 bucks, probably cost you a hundred bucks to produce and then another hundred to market. So if they would have sold that watch in like the five, six, $700 range, they would have sold a boatload of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But whoever was, was advising him on this or advising the company, I don't think he had really very much input. He did an interview with a friend of mine just recently and, it, you know, it's like he wasn't really advised properly. Whoever thought of this was just looking for a money grab and thought that, you know, oh, just because it's, you know, a bar stool, you know, that he would uh, so, he would make money. And so there it didn't. is. Uh, John Buckley calling Dave Portnoy a money grab sellout. No, I called I called his company a money grab. Oh, OK. And OK. I, you know, I was on bar stool recently and, you know, I mean, it, it was it was a nice experience. I mean, they were very, he was, he was, you know, it was like well, you doing, talked with him. Okay. Okay. No, I talked with some other guy, a guy named Doug's who found me somewhere. I mean, we had like, I don't know, two or 300,000 followers. On. But I mean, the thing with the watch, the Portnoy watch, it's, it's just sad because they could have made something that made a lot of money. It's just, they didn't think it through and well, they didn't consult anybody who really knows the market. The that, name, the name of it is brick. Which is kind of funny because that's what you call an electronic that stops working, a brick, right? It's bricked. Uh, you guys are from my generation. Remember when they named Led Zeppelin? They said it would go down like a lead balloon and mm. look at Led Zeppelin. Okay, uh, so yeah. there you go. There's still oh, hope. Here, Close they, enough. Wait, here's the yeah. return policy. Let's see. Their best return policy? The, uh, if our product revs damaged... Wait, why'd you send me this? Yeah, because you... it seems like there's no returns. There's only store credit. If you, if you buy one of the watches. Oh, oh. if you like to change your uh -huh. watch for store so credit. It's a little, yeah, I think you're right. No returns, huh? Uh, that's not cool. That's not no cool at all, Dave Portnoy. <laughs> We're calling you out. Uh, why do you guys, what do you guys have against Dave? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I like, I like to stir <laughs> shit. I'm just being a punk. He's our, he's our direct competition, so we, we have yeah, to. Yeah, but just so you know, well, you, so you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just a shitster. It's nothing personal. I'm just trying to yeah. start shit. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. I'm just being a punk. I'll, I'll help you start shit. Look at the people, okay, that are doing exactly what I'm doing in such a high production, just ridiculously fake way all over the internet now. I mean, we started this. I mean, I'm partners in Vukum, okay? And kid that started Vukum started this in the summer before I even started doing TikTok, doing negotiations. He and my son, who ran a jiu-jitsu right now, so I'm on my own, okay? That shows you where I'm at over here. They started doing the negotiations like in the late summer, and they were approached to do a TikTok show called, called Buying Time. Mm -hmm. And we wound up doing the show recently after I got into it, and now you got every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there going over there, hey, how much is this watch? Oh, I'll buy it for... $1,000. No, I want $1,250. And it's just so forced and just so, oh, it's cringy. Yeah. Just terrible. Look, you're the only real one out there, John. You're a trailblazer, and I wish everybody else nothing but the worst. <laughs>
And for you, John, only the best. But I appreciate you chatting with us. It was nice to get to know you. So, Congratulations on a really cool, interesting career. And also so cool that you're able to share it with the uh, with the people of the world. So very cool. I really, I wanted to say, I really appreciate you getting me on here. I, I know it's a big deal because every time I was like, oh, I'm doing this thing called H3. I was like, oh, wow, really? I'm like, oh. yeah, we're kind of a big deal. Oh. But it's, no, it's not, it's not, it's not a yeah, problem. This ain't, this ain't no small yeah, town I mean, stuff like yeah, bar this, stool. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, no, it's no problem though. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but not as big time as you. I mean, you're big. You're a big, you're big on TikTok. All right, John. I would, I was loving this stuff, you know, before it got popular. So it's it's just all good to me. I love it. It's it's important that everybody enjoys it, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it too. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I love it. G keep it up. God bless. Thank Go get more of those Laker rings. I want I want a Laker championship ring on every finger. You have me on next time. I'll come over here. Like <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> what I want. You tell me when you're ready, and I and I want that. I want that. I want the necklace. I want the watch. I want the most expensive you can put together. All right. A you crown? Do you have a tiara or a crown or something? I'll find it. Don't worry. Yeah. We have everything. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds awesome. All right. Uh, take care. Nice chatting. Thank you. Be well. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Good guy. Interesting guy. John Buckley.